Welcome to this podcast for Brighton School of Business and Management students studying for the HND Level 5 courses. The focus of this unit is that human resource development contributes to the overall success of an organisation through providing learning, development and training opportunities to improve team and organisational performance. Training and development affects everyone in the organisation and it is appropriate at every level from office junior to senior executive. All staff should be encouraged to develop their skills and knowledge to achieve their potential and in doing so enable the organisation to meet its strategic objectives. Where possible it is strongly advised that you discuss these topics with your line manager and with HR and training specialists within your organisation. Section 1. To respond to this you will need to have studied the following learning styles, for example activists, reflectors, theorists and pragmatists, that's Honey and Mumford, 1986, Kolb's learning style inventory, Myers-Briggs type indicator, learning theories, for example behaviourist, cognitive, reinforcement, experiential and stimulus response, requirements for effective learning, informal learning, workplace learning and self-managed learning. For bullet point two, you'll need to describe what is meant by the learning curve, that is getting better through repeating the activity, continuous learning and development, and discuss how training and learning can be transformed into performance in the workplace. For bullet point three, you'll need to describe a training or learning event scenario such as a workshop on quality control techniques and explain how a knowledge of different learning styles and learning theories might influence the format of the workshop. Section 2. Here you'll need to describe two different training needs scenarios or situations, for example at operational level and at senior management level, or for a back of house technical team and a front of house customer services team, and then discuss how you would identify the training needs, define the learning required, set objectives, plan and implement training, and evaluate that training for each one. Ideally, use your own organisation or one that you can research and assess the effectiveness of the range of training methods used, for example, workshops, on-site and off-site training, classroom, distance learning and online training, coaching, mentoring, project conferences and secondments, etc. On the last bullet point, prepare a plan for an actual training event, incorporating the best practices that you have learned about in studying this unit. Section 3. Here you need to be considering the what, why, when and who of evaluation, planning, design, delivery and implementation, key stakeholders, achievements of objectives and evaluate and review the success of an actual event, for example the one you organised in section 2 or one that you have attended recently. In doing so, you will need to consider the benefits and limitations of the training methods used, train and trainee feedback, participant comments, achievements of trainees and quality and performance improvements made as a result of the training event. Section 4. Your answer here can combine into a single sectioned response. You need to discuss government approaches to training and development in the UK, such as QCDA and Ofqual, Learning and Skills Council, Sector Skills Councils, Learn Direct, Investors in People, National Skills Academies, Apprenticeship Schemes, New Deal, Train to Gain and NVQs, and explain how much of an impact these have had on the development of skills in the UK workforce. You will need to evaluate the success of the competency movement, that is the focus on proving competence by providing evidence that you can perform to a certain level of competence in order to gain qualifications, compared to the more traditional developmental qualification where the focus is on learning more and developing knowledge and understanding and proving through discussion responses that you have the knowledge or the level of knowledge and understanding even if you don't perform to that level currently. You will also need to reflect on how much, if at all, these initiatives have affected the way in which human resources are managed and influence the human resource management strategies employed by most organisations. Here are a few websites that you will find useful when preparing for this assignment. And if you need any further help or guidance with this assignment, please contact your tutor.